Hello and welcome to my ongoing series covering every single Dimension 20 season out there. I have covered all of these in the past and believe me, I plan on covering every single one of these if it takes me years. Which at this point, it's seeming like it will, but literally no complaints by me. Today we are covering Burrow's End, the 20th season in Dimension 20. And honestly, to me, the true horror season in Dimension 20. Yeah, we had Never After, which was marketed as the horror season, and it was. It was the Brothers Grimm, and it had scary moments, but a lot of levity behind it. But it never had moments like this one does, where I was truly on the edge of my seat, scared for the characters, not wanting these characters to die. And some of the most gruesome battle settings I've seen in actual play Ever. Now, Burrow's End follows a group of stoats that get smoked out of their burrow and have to go on the run through the wilderness to try and find safety. They find safety in a giant abandoned factory that has tens of thousands of stoats in it, more stoats than they have ever seen in their little lives. But inside this factory lies a deep secret that threatens their livelihood and the livelihood of all other stoats. And underneath of this is a deeper mystery of what the blue is. This special thing that gives stoats powers, you know, these dungeons and dragons powers, making them have the ability to cast spells and to heal, live longer, be stronger, move faster, and talk in normal language. So they have to fight every step of the way for freedom. Some of them being children, a mother protecting their children, a grandmother trying to protect their entire family, and a couple that is just trying to make their way through life while also leading a cult. Now first, as I usually always do, I wanna talk about the characters in this. And one of the things that I noticed is that a lot of the people that we've seen before in Dimension 20, like Brennan, Siobhan, Erica, and Izzy, are all playing characters that are very different from themselves. But even though they're playing characters that are incredibly different from themselves, they're such amazing actors and amazing improvisationalists that when I'm watching this, I just get sucked into it and I see that character. Like Brennan Lee Mulligan is playing a, what if they weren't stoats would be like a 30 something year old widow mother of two absolute wild childs. And he sinks into that role of Tula, a single mom, so incredibly perfectly that I cease to see Brennan Lee Mulligan. I just see Tula, this absolutely exhausted mom. <laughs> Walmer is not gonna be anybody's dad or husband. Well, we'll see about that. No, if and Uncle Walmer was gonna make it happen, he would have made it happen by now. Uh, hello, he had a chance with my, he's not gonna be with my sister, no. <laughs> Thank you. And then Siobhan and Izzy are playing like child, they're, they're stoats, so they're only like a few months old. But if they were like people, would be like, I don't know, like 13, 14 year old kids. They're playing these siblings, the children of Tula. And Siobhan herself is playing this kid, Jason. She's playing a little boy. Everything about her mannerisms and the way she talks just makes her seem like this wild child little ADHD boy. Jason, what do you care about? <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> no. After all this, you want to eat. Mm. So it just can't work. I don't know. Izzy seems like her smarter sister that is just kind of along for the ride, but trying to keep Jason on the right path. Even tiny little wardrobe choices that Siobhan and Izzy make just sink them into this role of children, especially, especially Siobhan. It's so impressive what she does with the character of Jason to just embody this like little ADHD boy. And then you have Erica who always kind of plays weird characters. I've never once seen her play a character that was similar to anything else she's ever played, whether it be in Escape from the Blood Keep or uh, Misfits and Magic or this or the other things that she's been involved with. She's always playing something incredibly original. And in this, she is playing like the grandmother, really old haggard uh, character, this maternal figure of this entire uh, borough of this little family group. And Erica always gets very sucked into a role. She's almost method in the way that she plays because even when she's just talking out of character, she's still doing the mannerisms and the voice of whatever character she is doing. And then uh, I 
jump up on the left turn, and I go, I'm too stubborn to die. Killed again. Uh, and uh, in rage, I uh, take a swing at this this one right here. And of course I have to shout out Rashawn Nadine Scott as Viola and Jasper William Cartwright as Thorn Vale. Two newcomers to the dome. They're playing uh, a couple. Um, Viola is the sister of Tula of Brennan Lee Mulligan. And like I said, their acting and improvisational skills are incredible in the fact that they can play like sisters so incredibly well. You always, you always feel the familialness in all of these actors. And that's so impressive in like, especially a side quest where they have little time to kind of build up the characters. And especially in a world like this, which is so unique and needs so much fleshing out. Jasper William Cartwright, who plays Thorn Vale, also uh, very, very good. Like, I hope I see more of him in the dome. I don't know him from anything else, but instantly captivating as kind of this like reluctant cult leader, but also desperately trying to become liked by this family that he's going to be a part of soon. Yeah, I'll let you going. lead with mama. I'm not doing that. I'm definitely- Oh, she's a teddy bear. No, what? she is not. She's a teddy bear with huge claws. <laughs> Terrifying huge claws. Nothing scares me more than your mother. And then of course you have a Bria Iyengar, who at this point has appeared in almost as many seasons as people from the Intrepid Heroes. Like Brian Murphy, Murph has appeared in all eight of the seasons of the Intrepid Heroes, but nothing else. A Bria Iyengar is approaching him having appeared in six, three as a character and three as a DM. She's the most common DM besides Brennan, and I absolutely see why. She is always, always pushing the envelope when it comes to being a DM. Whether it be in Misfits and Magic where she introduces a lot of props like the wands, whether it be in A Court of Fae and Flowers where there's so much different set dressing and outfits and makeup that go into it to just bring you into the world. And then in this, where you have so much interactivity in the walls of the dome, but then also that horrifying, horrifying voice recording that we get later on in this season. Hey Skywalker, the time is currently 1848 and at approximately um, 517 today, this facility registered a loss of coolant accident in Reactor Charlie. Every single time that a Bria features herself as a DM, you just know that something new is going to happen. She, she even states herself that she's always meeting with the set decorators and the people that are making the miniatures and the battle maps and just being like, what can I do? Like the bear in this is just horrifying. Like they have to issue a warning before the episode that that, that bear map is gonna be on here, how it opens up and it has like that beating heart that actually moves. Just disgusting, but in the coolest possible way. And it's things like that that make me so excited for when Abria is gonna be a guest DM for a season. Now, speaking of the horrifying and the gross, the reason I said in the beginning that this is the true horror season is because I like Never After. I haven't finished it, I've watched a bit, I got sidetracked, I will get to Never After, I promise. But from what I've seen, it's fun and it has like horror elements, is Brothers Grimm, which is always a great, great setting when you're going for like anything horror that like uh true telling of like uh of like child's tales always amazing but in this you have like this close-knit family of stoats these small fragile creatures that are just constantly in peril and especially with these children any single time that they are in danger and you think that they are going to die I'm just on the edge of my seat because I'm like, no, not Jason, anybody but Jason. From the very beginning, you have them fleeing their home, their original burrow in the forest because they get smoked out by a forest fire. And and so many in their burrow perish and all of Thornvale's followers in his cult die. And then they're just wandering alone trying to find a place to call home. And then eventually when they do find home, a new home, they are sucked into this mystery with radiation and horrible disfigured monsters and ancient stoats. I mean like ancient, they're like I think 30 years old, but ancient for a stoat. The entire time you're just terrified that this family unit is going to get pulled apart in some kind of way. And a couple times it nearly happens and, and you're led to believe, oh, they're dead now. But the slow burn of this mystery is another thing that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, there's horrifying things like like the bear and like Meat Wolf, but you're on the edge of your seat because 
you 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 have the suspense buildup of what this mystery is, and they're constantly referencing the blue, and you don't know until the end, although you, you deeply suspect it, that it is some kind of radiation that is giving the Stoats these abilities. Having said all that, though, and this is really the only true negative I can find, is the slow burn of this can sometimes be a bit too slow, you know? And I'm going to get a little bit in-depth here, of Dimension 20 in general. Because there are certain times where I've said that stories are too long, and there are certain times when I said that stories are too short. This is one that I think honestly could have been about two episodes shorter. The beginning was really interesting, really intriguing. The ending was really interesting and really intriguing. The middle of this season drug on a little bit, if I'm honest. There's parts of it in the middle where I had some difficulty keeping my attention on it 100% of the time, and I found myself playing on my phone and then be like, oh, nope, can't get distracted, I gotta watch this. And after thinking about it deeply, the reason I kind of came to is I think things like, uh, like Misfits and Magic and Mentopolis and this, these like really different settings, these very story-driven narratives that have to be railroaded a bit more by the DM, lend themselves very nicely to, uh, one, different systems. I think this one could have lended itself very nicely to the same thing that those has, which was the kids on bike system. Although the combat was a lot of fun, I think maybe kids on bikes could have served this one a bit better than normal 5e, or maybe some kind of in-between, something that was much more uh, narrative and role-playing based. Although the combat was fun, it was sparse. I felt like a system like that could have served this maybe a little bit better. And I think worlds like that serve themselves to a shorter, more concise storytelling of like four to six episodes. I think things like, uh, like Fantasy High or Crown of Candy that are much more standard fantasy world. Granted, Fantasy High is like Fantasy World meets the 80s, but it operates exactly like fantasy we already understand. Same goes for Crown of Candy. Extremely standard fantasy world, just replace things with food and candy. We don't need any explanation of that world. The characters have much more ability to free roam. Yes, the story has points it has to get to that Brennan railroads them to, but it has a lot more freedom to find its way there naturally, whereas something like like this and Mentopolis and Misfits and Magic has to go about it in a much more linear way. And because of that, I feel like that lends itself to shorter seasons. So I think this one could have been much better if it was really only about two episodes shorter. But that is really my only gripe with it. Do you agree with that? I've thought a lot about why I think it should be shorter and the, the why I think some seasons work better short and some work longer. So are you kind of on the same page with me there? I'd love to know. Having said all that, in the end, especially after we meet the human in the second to the last episode, it captures my attention so much again. Hey girl, hey! We got to talk to them, don't we? If, if that's not advantage. <laughs> Oh my God. And I'm incredibly invested in the ending. And overall, it was a killer ending. I loved the way they did it. Ending these kinds of like really mind fuckery seasons can be kind of difficult to stick the landing. And although I do wish it may have been a little bit darker in the end, I thought it was a little bit too much of like a fairy tale ending. It goes a little bit off the deep end with the whole like Olympics and doctor degrees and whatever. It's fun. It's it's D and D. It doesn't. It's not realistic. These are talking stoats. But I do feel like there could have been a couple darker elements. Maybe one of them should actually have died in the end. With this whole time of this whole season always being on the edge of your seat for that and it being as terrifying as it was, I felt like one of them should have probably died. Or at least like like a fun side character, but not Lucas. Not Lucas. Leave Lucas alone. He's perfect as he is. We gotta come here every morning. Who says? My mom. You do what your mom says? All the time. Other than that, I'm, I am was very pleased with the ending and very pleased with this whole season as a whole. Anytime I see a Bria, I'm just in love with the season. All of these, but anyway, thank you for watching guys. Be on the lookout for the next one. I'm currently watching a Starstruck Odyssey and I'm in the middle of watching as they come out junior year. So look out for those. I don't know which one's gonna come next. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other videos.